Welcome back. It is Friday, April 5th in the NBA. My three best bets are on the way. Today, we also have a ladder play. We'll talk about that in a second. But first, we need to do a recap from yesterday. A one and two day. Not terrible. Annoying a little bit. Amen Thompson, our only winner of the day, under 12 and a half points. Pretty sweat free. He ended with eight. Uh, James Harden was the annoying one. He had eight assists, missed on the hook. I don't know how many potential assists he had, but it was a lot of them because there were a lot of missed shots in that Nuggets Clippers game. Shame that he ended with eight. The DeJounte Murray had a great first half, 13 in the first half. Honestly, didn't really shoot in the second half. It was the Bogdan show, hence why the Hawks got smoked. Either way, a one and two day, not ideal. We had a great day on Thursday or on Wednesday, not a great day on, on Thursday. Hopefully we can bounce back here on Friday. We have a big slate, so there's a very good chance I do add some plays. So stay tuned for the pin comment. I always say that the last few added plays we've been dialed in. Probably going to look at adding an under because we don't have any in the video, but I really will add probably add at least one, maybe two plays. But without further ado, I want to mention one last thing. If you haven't been checking out the MLB videos, I say it almost every day now. Go check out the MLB Best Bets videos posted right before these ones. Look, we've been on a 12-3 and three run over there. Haven't had a losing day in April yet, and hopefully that doesn't start today. We've been dialed in. April, great month for us historically betting MLB. feel like a broken record, but I always say it. Go check out that video right after this one. But the first pick of the day is going to be our ladder play. Now, it's not like the normal you know, ladder parlay. It's actually just on one guy, kind of like Scoot Henderson a few days ago. It is on another rookie who got picked first overall, Victor Wembenyama. Here's how I'm playing his props. I'm taking his over and assist. Now, I'm playing one unit. So if your st standard unit bet, let's say, is 100 bucks. I say 100 bucks on his regular over four and a half assists, well, I'm minus one of five on DraftKings. But I'm also sprinkling a little bit on a quarter of a unit on his over five and a half assists, just one more at plus 180. And then another quarter unit on his over six and a half assists, which is plus 350 on bet 365, plus 350. Obviously, if you're bucks only, if you're on maybe DraftKings, they have, I think the odds are like plus 340 on the six and a half. So not a big difference. I'm just giving you the best odds out there. Now, I don't mind Wembenyama for seven and a half assists. That's about plus 600. You can take that if you want. I think seven and assists is pretty good for him. Eight might be a reach. He still could get eight and I will root for him to get a triple double. But and hopefully it's not with blocks. But let's talk about Wembenyama, who in this total, we have one and a half units risked on his assist prop. Now, Wemby and the Spurs are on the road to face the Pelicans. Pelicans are reeling. I expect the Spurs to lose here, but let's hope they can keep it competitive. Over Wemby's last four games, he has had six, seven, five, and eight assists. So his standard line, he's cashing all four. The, all the way up to the top rung of the ladder, he's of seven assists, he's cashed in two of four. The last two games, though, without Devin Vassell and Jeremy Sohan, Wemby has averaged 12 and a half potential assists. He's been averaging a ton of potential assists. I'll talk about why. But obviously, Devin Vassell and Jeremy Sohan are a big reason why. They are out for the season now. And in turn, Greg Popovich, instead of, you know, saying, ah, fine, we'll let you guys kind of figure out what you're doing on offense, it's kind of been like, let's test that Wemby Nyama, test his limits, let's ha help him grow and mature. And what you've seen is if Wemby gets a board, He's typically bringing up the ball, pushing the fast break. If he's also, they're also giving it to him at the top of the key to facilitate some offense, call some plays. And that's obviously great for Wembenyama long-term and great for our assist prop because we don't necessarily need Wembenyama getting into the post and having to kick it out to a shooter. Instead, he's running some plays, getting it to his teammates. We're going to shoot some catch and shoot threes, which is a good way to attack the Pelicans defense. Now, obviously, Wembenyama will get his attempts up there too. But at the end of the day, he's been facilitating this offense a lot. And I don't like Trey Jones matchup. If you recall, last game, Trey Jones took his over an assist at six and a half. Pretty easy. He got 11, but this is not a great matchup for him. He's going to have Herb Jones harassing him all 94 feet. It's going to be annoying for him. Instead, I think Wembenyama will get the ball at the top of the key. Maybe get Larry Nance Jr. or Jonas Valanciunas on him. That's a good matchup for him to attack. But I also think if he attacks, you'll see he'll probably have to kick it out to the shooters. And we've seen last five games, Pelicans have seen six players that have averaged at least eight potential assists. Those guys ended with six, seven, nine, six, and seven assists. We get six assists out of Wembenyama. I think it's a great, I think that's great. But also we think about Wembenyama. Where is this going? To the three-point line or going to guys down below at the bottom of the basket where there's no rim protection? We think about he's going to take the center out of the equation. So there's not a lot of rim protection. He can dump it down low to a guy that's cutting. Boom, hopefully those guys can make those shots. So look, Wembenyama, I think he approaches 10 to 12 potential assists. They are assists, so you're asking other guys to make shots. But at the end of the day, I feel like there's a lot of value here in some of these assist props. So Wembenyama, I almost took us over last game. It was plus 120 at four and a half. I wish it was that case today, but it's minus 105 with a little bit of a quarter unit sprinkle on the five and a half and the six and a half for a little bit better value. I really think Wembenyama has a good chance of getting maybe even eight, 10 assists if he wants to go crazy. I love Wemby for assists today, my favorite pick of the day. Now my second pick is going 
going to go going to another rookie. This guy, I think, is in for a good matchup here. And this is Brandon Miller of the Charlotte Hornets, over 18.5 points, plus 100 on FanDuel. I'd play this at 19.5. I personally would be shocked if it ended at 19.5. I think 18.5 is a good line for him. It was 17.5, like minus 130. I'm not going to lay minus 130 on a points prop. If he ends with 18, whatever. But obviously, Miller back at home, taking on the Orlando Magic. Now, they are expected to get some guys back. Miles Bridges, he should return here. But I don't really care a ton about those guys. Brandon Miller, just like Wembenyama, final games of the year. Obviously, try, obviously trying to go into the summer with obviously some momentum. And he's been playing pretty decently. His last six games, he's averaged 21 and a half points per game. Hitting this over in five of six games. Averaging about 17.7 field goal attempts. 15 field goal attempts in all six of those. So the volume for him is pretty high. Miles Bridges will get his volume. But outside of that, there's really not a lot of guys on this Hornets team that are like, oh, all right, I got to go out there and shoot it and create my own shot. Honestly, no. I just watched a lot of that Blazers-Hornets game sweating out Scoot, and I had to watch Hornets offense for 48 minutes, and it was disgusting. The ball just ended up in Brandon Miller's hands a ton, and he was like, all right, fine, I got to hoist it. And Miller and the Hornets, they just played the Magic in, on the road in Orlando on March 19th. They lost by 20 points. They got smoked, so they could get smoked again here. But in that game, he had 21 points on 7 of 20 shooting, played 32 minutes. End of the day, I think Miller, a guy that is pretty confidently locked into at least 30 minutes, and I think he's going to shoot 15, 20 times. I mean, this is a Hornets team that just doesn't have a lot of guys that can score. And Miller, where he does his damage, is kind of where you want to attack the Magic. The Magic don't give up a lot of catch and shoot threes, and they also don't give up a lot of points at the rim. That's not really where, you know, Miller thrives. He's going to the rim and scoring and laying it in. That's not really what he does. He drives, gets the mid-range. That's what he does. It's kind of similar to like a Paul George kind of thing. Well, actually, he's said Paul George is his GOAT. I'm not going to, I'm not, this is not the time or place to top of that, but this season he's averaged 21.9 points per game in 22 home games with at least 15 shots. He's over in 77% of such games, including 13 of his last 15. At the end of the day, I think this is a guy that's going to get the field goal attempts. They're not going to be the worst looks in the world. And this comes out if he makes some shots last game, one for eight from three. Didn't really buy a bucket from the three-point line. Maybe he starts to make some of those tonight. He's also handling the ball a little bit more. I wouldn't be surprising if they let him be the pick-and-roll ball handler a good amount here because, you know, you're trying to develop a rookie. And so at the end of the day, I think he gets to the top of the key, the mid-range, shoots those shots. But I also think he gets some open threes too tonight. And I think the, the Hornets can keep this game somewhat close to where Brandon Miller gets a good amount of minutes, good amount of field goal attempts, 18 and a half points. I think a tad too low. I personally think the line should be about 19 and a half minus 120. So 18 and a half at plus 100. I will take it. Brandon Miller, I need you to go dominate, put the ball in the basket. And my third final pick of the day is another guy that we've not bet on this year. And it is a, not a rookie, but it is a guy that has not been in the league for too long, but he's really been stepping up for my New York Knicks. It is Miles McBride of the New York Knicks, over 15 and a half points, minus 120 on FanDuel. If the line goes to 16 and a half, I don't mind it there. You could just look at taking his point plus assists at that point, but Miles McBride, I need 16, 17 points out of you today. I consider taking 15 points and three, and three threes. However, that was like minus 135, and I'm not going to lay that juice. Now, let's talk about McBride, who obviously has become a big staple of the New York Knicks rotation. Yes, Yesterday, they came off a game against the Kings, down 21, came back soaring in. Brent McBride didn't play too well. I think he bounces back here, and I am willing to quote in this video, I have no idea if the Knicks rest them, guys. The Knicks obviously have run their stars into the ground. Brunson's been playing tons of minutes. Josh Hart, tons of minutes. Dante DiVincenzo, tons of minutes. Miles McBride, tons of minutes. If the Knicks rested someone today, it wouldn't really surprise me a ton on a back-to-back -back, given the playoffs are around the corner. I don't expect it to happen, but I'm just saying it is worth noting it could happen and that could play into our favor. Miles McBride, rest, never heard of it. He's played 40 minutes in nine straight games. He's averaged 18.9 points per game, around 13.3 field goal attempts, and he's over in five of nine such games. Like I said last night, not the night for McBride. He didn't play well. Shot four for 13, did end with 12 points. He, what You look at his other teammates, Brunson, 35 points. Hart, 31 points, and Dante DiVincenzo at 21. So when the three other, I mean, when we think about this Knicks team, four guys are really shooting the basketball for him. Brunson, Hart, honestly, Hart, sometimes questionable. Dante and then McBride. Hartenstein, not shooting the ball. Bojan kind of sucks off the bench. Alec Burks barely gets minutes these days. Mitchell Robinson, not shooting the ball. So at the end of the day, McBride's going to get some opportunities here. And I really think this is the spot to back him. I mean, we think about McBride in this matchup against the Bulls, pretty good for him. Over the last 10 games, the Bulls, sixth most catch and shoot threes allowed in the NBA. We talk about it all the time. They like the blitz opposing team's number one ball handler. That leads to a lot of catch and shoot threes. Well, the last eight games when McBride's played 40 or more minutes, whatever, he's averaged 6.8 catch and shoot threes. And in those games, I mean, he's shooting 44% on those shots. So a lot of catch and shoot attempts for him. Now, Dante DiVincenzo is the guy normally on the Knicks that you want to target for catch and shoot defenses. But 
the Bulls ain't stupid. I think if they're going to leave any guy open, it's probably not going to be Dante DiVincenzo. And I think that they're going to try to contest and have a guy on Dante all game long. Dante obviously could get his looks too, but McBride should get his looks as well. And I really think this is a spot that I like backing him over 15 and a half points. If somehow Brunson gets ruled out, great CLV. He probably jumps up to like 20 and a half, but I really think this is a spot I would like to back a guy like McBride. I think he's going to get some volume tonight. Comes out if he makes some shots and I think he gets the shots tonight, 13 to 15 shots. If he's making a shot, so go over this line. That's kind of how it goes. If you're looking for plus money, I like his over four and a half threes as well. I'm just going to stick to just the over 15 and a half points, but they kind of go hand in hand. If he makes four threes, he's probably going over this line, but he could obviously go over this line without four, but he's going to probably need at least three to get over this 15 and a half points line. So those are my favorite picks of the day. We're riding with Wembenyama's assist, a little bit of a ladder. Brandon Miller, his points, and McBride, his points. Miles McBride, I need 16. Go get it done. Those are my three favorite picks of the day. But like I said, there's going to probably be an added pick or two or maybe three in the pinned comment section down below. Definitely check it out. I'll look at a couple different things and probably add an under, maybe another over. We'll see. I'll add those picks down below in the pinned comment. So definitely come back and check it out. I'll have them live by 2 p.m. Eastern at the latest, which gives you over five hours. So I don't want to hear anyone complaining if the added plays sweep tomorrow. Definitely check that pin comment out we want to go check out our mlb picks that is live on the screen somewhere over here another australia video somewhere live and then when our odds checker parlay of the day for the mlb is live i'll link it over here we are four and oh on them this week I'm trying to go to fabino see you guys in the next one peace